A district attorney's office representing over 2 million people being involved in murder and cover-up is a serious accusation, particularly because it's an anathema for the reason the criminal justice system exists. Unfortunately, we do have a two-tier system. For example, in 2014, Ray Rice, a running back for the Baltimore Ravens, was accused of domestic violence. He allegedly punched his wife inside an elevator at the Revel Casino, located in Atlantic City. Subsequent investigations by the local prosecutor's office, the NFL, and members of the fourth estate never demanded to see the video from the elevator. As I mentioned, this is a casino. This is the first question in any investigation. The video was only released after the Revel Casino closed. So what's the takeaway? People are involved in conspiracies. I couldn't get away with this. I'm sure you couldn't get away with this unless you know the right people. Eileen Canford knew the right people. And other people are involved. Why? Because we're talking about a three-quarter of a million dollar estate. This maxim, legal concept, and idiom do have an arc of commonality as they all rely on our reasonable standards of behavior to draw conclusions, mutually or non-mutually exclusive. Keeping this in mind, I'm going to apply this to Audra Bierman and the behavior of the Queen's District Attorney's Office. If you look at this slide, you'll see that they are talking about one individual, and all of these occurred within a three-year period. He has three restraining orders against him. He's been described as mentally unstable. He's been accused of stealing a handgun and buying another firearm over the internet. He also was in proximity to two other handguns that went missing. In addition, there was also a high-powered hunting rifle which went missing. So there's a chance this man has six firearms. He's been investigated twice by NYC Adult Protective Services, being accused of physically abusing his father. He also has accused Audra Bierman, head of the Domestic Violence Division in the Queens DA's office, of conspiring with Eileen Cansford to murder Robert Silver. He has sent emails to various New York City organizations. He has sent emails to the Queens District Attorney's Office. He has called the Queens District Attorney's Office. And he also called Audra Bierman's voicemail and left two voicemail messages. By now, I suspect everyone realizes I'm talking about myself. There Things there are accurate or not, I'm well past the point of trying to explain myself. Let's accept this narrative for what it is. So the question is, what do the Queens District Attorneys do about this? Particularly after I left the voicemails. Did they knock on the apartment door? Did they call me? Did they send me a cease and desist letter? And what was their response? The big reveal? This lack of response makes sense if you're afraid to draw attention to yourself. And why? Because Audra Bierman has something to hide. I've accused a number of people of murder, very serious charges, and there's at least $160,000 in cash that will pay for lawsuits accusing me of defamation of character, yet nothing has happened. So this gets back to our concepts, the idiom, the maxim. Why aren't these people acting like they should if they were innocent? Because they're not. Quick note, I didn't discuss the meeting with the detectives assigned to the Queens District Attorney's Office. I'll be working on that now. There are a lot of parallels in terms of what should happen and what didn't happen, and I will get into that specifically.